Yo, this is Deontay the Bronze Bummer Wilder, heavyweight champion of the world, and you're watching Real Fans Real Talk. Face facts, what up, what up? Realfansrealtalk.com, where Arthur Domus Trip Young and intern Tom, for the white and black fans, Asia to Manhattan. I get all my facts from my bro, Mark the Stats Man. If you're not tuned in, I recommend the CAT scan. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And if your brain checks out, then you deserve a backhand. <laughs> Sports, gossip, all the hot topics. Hey, hey. Realfansrealtalk.com got it. Uh -huh. They got the hottest bloggers. It's Jeremy Linhurt. We'll log onto the site and you can hear it from them first. I'm talking about the latest, yeah, I'm talking yeah. about the greatest. Yeah, yeah. Go check out the archive. Even tell a neighbor, tell a Bobby sent ya. From spring to winter, tuning in should be the only thing on your agenda. Certified coach, son, you know what I'm about, son. Real fans, real talk .com. I'm out one. Real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk .com. Real fans, real talk .com. Uh, Real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk .com. Real fans, real talk .com. What's going on? Welcome back to another live episode of Real Fans Real Talk. Whole lot been going on this past week. The NBA Finals are in full effect. Toronto got a 3-2 lead right now, but uh, AP is done for the year. But uh, we're going to get into that in a minute. Let me introduce my co-host, Legend in Two Games. What's going on? You already know it's Thursday night. We got to get into that massive choke job by the Raptors the other night. <laughs> Let that get away. KD's done. Free agency, we're about two weeks away from the start of it. That's a fact. We got, we got a special ball ourselves, a special guest in the building tonight, man. The MVP is in the building. What's going on, sir? Welcome What's to the What's going on, fellas? How y'all doing? How y'all doing? How y'all doing? I should have known, you know, first of all, introduce yourself to the world. Let them know at home, all right, who, who you are. Uh, my name is Terry Harrison. I'm a pro bowl player. Um, right now I'm on the circuit with everybody else right now. Circuit is starting up. West Forth, Gersh, Dykeman. All that, so you can catch me on the circuit right now. So, from East New York, Brooklyn, repping the town. I should have known he was from East New York because <laughs> when we was at the, the top secret open run that we told you about a couple of weeks ago, he was talking like he was KD on the court. Of, you know, well, it was like a lot of chirping, a lot of yeah. chirping going on very early. Like, I think from yeah. the first basket of the game, exactly. he let it be known. He, he made his presence felt. Well, we was rocking with it, though. Oh, yeah, we, absolutely. We, we love that. We love that type of thing. Yeah, I'm fun. I'm fun. Yeah, definitely was. And, but you backed it up. Okay, you did. I, if you, I'm telling you, if you had went to the ball of a piece and you did not know what we was going to talk about it. But I told you I was going to do it. Right. You really did. You know, we can respect that you came home with the uh, with, with the MVP trophy. Um, and shout out to H2O and uh, everybody over there that, that, you know, did their thing to put Balling for Peace together. Um, just, you know, just really quick, man, just tell us what was going on with the performance. At the Balling for Peace or yeah, at man. the open run? Well, yeah, well we're going we're gonna, to give, give me one second. Let me, let me, let me just we gotta, say We got to get the audio right there. You know what I'm saying? We, we'll, we'll get into that because the Balling for Peace performance was, was great. Um, the open run, I mean, y'all held down the court for about five straight games before y'all finally got knocked off there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But even then, it wasn't like y'all got embarrassed. It was more like just a little bit of fatigue, five straight games. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So talk about your mindset going into Balling for Peace. Like, did you go in already knowing, like, I'm I'm walking away with the, with the hardware? Nah. I went in there looking to have fun. I, I mean, I took his shit, so I had to put on a show for him. Or he'd never <laughs> <laughs> but um, I went in there looking just to have fun. Like, you know, I always peep what Haran do, and it's a great event, you know, and a lot of great personalities. So I just went there to have fun. But then Fareed was like, y'all really want to win. Like, you know, forget all this fun. Yeah, so he was like, I need you to turn it up. He was like, you like you play both for real. I'm like, yeah, he's like, so turn it up, so. That's what I did. Everybody was like, Houston already took that L in the playoffs, so I can't lose again. <laughs> right. For me, for me, you could tell he was making a lot of substitutions. Yeah. He was really wanting to win that yeah. one to put that on the resume. Yeah, he wanted he wanted that. You know, James Harden let him down in real life, so. Yeah. Right. <laughs> he got you, though. He got you. Right. <laughs> yeah. So that, 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 that's, a, that's a beautiful thing. But again, shout out to H2O. Uh, next stop on the Bowling for Peace Store is going to be the flag football game later this summer. So you guys. You know, we'll keep you informed on everything that's going on with the whole Balling for Peace movement. But uh, it is the NBA Finals tonight, immediately after the show. Uh, game 6 will not feature uh, the, that silky smooth brother named Kevin Durant. The easy he money has a, sniper. An Achilles tear, and he just had surgery, which was kind of funny because he came to New York to get the surgery. To <laughs> so, but uh, I'm going to start with you listening to uh, two games. You know, what's going on right now, man? Um, so obviously we know KD's on the shelf for probably about 10 months to a year. 
unfortunate because he really made the ultimate sacrifice to try to come back and help the Warriors overcome the 3-1 deficit. Um, he was playing well, too. He didn't look rusty at all. Um, but, you know, these are the sacrifices we make. And we've had these talks before because we had a similar discussion during football season. We talked about Le'Veon sitting out the whole year and Earl Thomas even threatening that he should have sat out. And you see the type of injury. Um, fortunately for, for Durant, he does have some security because he can opt into his deal. He doesn't have to necessarily just hit the open market and take the chance that DeMarcus Cousins took last year. Yeah. He can opt into the $31 million he's due. But I ultimately think he is going to get the full max this offseason. He's a guy who came back from really bad foot troubles a couple years ago. Still young guy, 30 going on 31. And if you're the Knicks, if you're the Nets, you're, you're still going to take the gamble on, on bringing Durant in. Now, I got to ask you, East New York, Brooklyn. Are you, are you rocking with the Nets right now? Oh, for sure. So would you want the Nets to still sign Kevin Durant right now, even though he's going to be out for a year? Oh, yeah, for sure, for sure. His resume speaks for itself. Right. Like, you can't turn a talent like that down, yeah. you know, regardless of what his injury was. You know, got two-time NBA champion finals MVP. So I, I would have to agree, as you know, the Brooklyn uh, <laughs> enemy. I would have to agree that mm. I'm, I still want to sign KD. It's looking like uh, Kyrie. Is going to be joining the Nets as well. He just signed to the Rock. Shout out to, to Hove, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know. So, yeah, I think, you know, Brooklyn about to be lit, man. I think. They, they I don't know about that move, though. You don't know about Kyrie? I don't, I don't know about Kyrie and Kevin Durant being able to play together. Um, I, I mean, I think it could work. I, my thing with the Nets is, and I like what they're doing. It's not that I don't like the, that they put themselves in position. I just think that they really overachieved last year. And they don't have the other pieces. So if you come out of free agency only with Kyrie, like, how much better are you really than last year? I, I really would have liked to see them keep D'Angelo Russell and keep building on that young core as opposed to swinging for the fences with Kyrie. Kyrie has had agree. multiple knee surgeries. And this is a guy that you're really going to say, all right, this is the future of the franchise. We saw what he did with a young team in Boston. Is it going to be any better than Brooklyn? Well, I think it will be better in Brooklyn just because I think the situation is going to be different, and they're not going to just sign Kyrie. Even if they don't get uh, get Durant, I'm sure they'll go after Jimmy Butler or Tobias Harris. So they'll bring someone else in, and I do think then that makes the team better moving forward. And they have a, a, a lot of pieces in place. But, in, you know, they're still in the Eastern Conference right now, which is still top-heavy, you know, after... The top know, four, yeah. Yeah, everything is kind of up in the air. So, and then on top of, you know, of, of that... You know, we we got to see what, what Kawhi's going to do because I don't think Kawhi stays in Toronto win or lose. I think he's still going to gonna be out of there. I think, yeah, that's that's a big question mark. I think it's going to be tough for Kawhi to leave. Um, though I do think the Clippers are probably the best scenario because I think a lot of people overlooking the Clippers to even be in the running for Anthony Davis. They've got the salaries that they can make a match. They've got the draft picks, the future draft picks. They got the salary. And they got a couple young pieces where if they just really go all in and say, yo, AD, come here and we'll persuade Kawhi to come. I mean, that's a completely different meeting now with Kawhi. You got the established head coach. You got Jerry, Re Jerry West running the show as a GM. For sure. And if, you, if you're able to pull the trigger on Anthony Davis, it's going to be hard for Kawhi to say, nah, I'm not going. For sure. And you like know. you said, you hit the nail on the head. They got a lot of stability in, right. on the Clippers. Yeah. You know, Lakers, too much chaos going on. Right. Too much drama. And LeBron's always a, it's always a talk show when you know, they're playing with LeBron. You know, a lot of added pressure. Good right. Clippers, no pressure. And, you know, he could be himself and right. just focus on winning games, you know, and not everything that's going on behind the scenes. So, And I also, I mean, the reason I think the Toronto situation is going to be tough is because I think Nick Nurse has kind of proven himself as a head coach. And he also handled the minutes uh, wisely with Kawhi during the regular season. Yeah. You know, he wasn't forcing the minutes on him. He would let him get a break here, there. And so now we're seeing the effects of that because now Kawhi has just been a monster of these playoffs. You well, know what I'm saying? Which is kind of why... You know, I mean, I mean not, not everybody, but, you know, a lot of people that got at Kawhi because he didn't come back when they felt like he should have came back. And, you know, again, going back to, to Kevin Durant, he took his time to come back. And, I mean, it was looking like he's on the verge of, you know, possibly winning an NBA title with the Toronto Raptors because he did it his way. Whereas with Kevin Durant, you got all the chitter chat. Oh, Golden State's better without you. Oh, you mm -hmm. you don't have the heart of a champion. Well, you, you're not trying to play her. Clay Thompson just came back in. Looney just came back in. But you don't come back in, and then boom, now you come back in early, and you're gonna miss a year more than likely because you you know you tore your your Achilles. Um, He's a hooper though. You can't blame him. I, I don't think he had anything to go go to Golden all. State. I don't, I don't He's blame a hooper. Him. And one thing I say is, if you pay attention to that injury, and any athlete, or even if you're not an athlete, you just follow sports a lot, 
that wasn't just a calf injury because oh. he didn't grab for his right. calf when it happened. He right. clearly grabbed for his Achilles. And anybody watching any previous kid, Kobe, Demarcus, mm -hmm. the first, mm -hmm. and they look back like somebody shot everybody him. Said, everybody said that except for Golden State, which is why I'm so upset with the, with the Warriors. I mean, I understand you still want to play your, your mental, the strategy games. Yeah. The Rams coming back. Oh, it's just the calf. It's just, it's just that. You know what I'm saying? But also with that, if Golden State – in the series is up three games to one. Kevin Durant don't never, even try to come back. I sure. think if they tie two two, he doesn't come back yet. For sure. They, yeah. they waited out as long as they can. For sure. And I, I agree. The, the pressure was more from the Warriors. For yeah. sure. Um, like you talked about with Clay coming back, with Looney coming back, but just to see the reaction from their president of, of basketball, Bob Myers, him crying. That's him knowing we really guilted him <laughs> yeah. into this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. we put this unnecessary pressure on this guy to come back. Yeah. And now look what happened. And he broke down on the yeah. stand. Right. <laughs> that was the game. Katie don't go cry. Right. Yes. Right. Yeah. That's right. what it was. We need you. We need you, Jim. Come right. bring it don't back. Don't leave. Right. Yeah. When 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 I'm Doris sorry. when Doris uh, Burke had talked about it right before halftime, and she talked about how emotional it was in the locker room, and his agent was in the locker room. I'm sure that was an intense conversation yeah. they had. Like you guys pushed this issue now, mm -hmm. so now yep. look what happened. Mm -hmm. You know, because they had the power to say Katie don't play. Absolutely, yeah. They, they could have shut that down. Absolutely. Even if he wanted to play, they could have told him Katie don't play. Or even, I mean, even if he did, I mean, you could have restricted the minutes a little bit. I mean, he played a good chunk of minutes straight. You know what I'm saying? Like they could have maybe brought him out three minute spurts here and there, did it a little differently. But either way, you know, they had the, the ultimate. They could have said, nah, mm -hmm. this is not happening. We'd rather keep you. I mean, next at, season. Yeah, at the end of the day, I mean, yeah, you always want another championship. It's great for the organization. But when you got a bunch of guys who are in their early 30s and are, you got five top 20 players on the same team, you want those guys to be healthy. You want them to, you know, to, to come back. And now yeah. you risk losing Kevin Durant altogether. Right. So the interesting part of it, the immediate thought to me was, that means they knew KD was leaving. Because they tried to squeeze out as much as they could from KD before yeah. he left. Because if they really That's felt in their point. heart like he's coming back, they would not have pushed it. Yeah. That's you a know, great point. Why would you? Right. You, you don't want to risk it. Right. With those three guys, you know you've got a bright future. You can still run the West for the next three to four years. But for you to force that issue, it's like he's gone. We know he's gone. Yeah. Even though he, he hasn't said it publicly, we know privately he's gone. And they're probably losing Boogie as well. And we know next year Draymond's probably leaving. So they probably felt like this was a legitimate shot. We got to try to win it now yeah. before we break up the team. Yeah. For sure. Well, you think anybody's going to want Boogie? Yeah. Yeah. Teams will want him. And, and you're gonna, you're, it's going to be a team that's going to overpay because they missed out on one through five. You know, they, they didn't get Kawhi. They didn't get, get Durant. They didn't get Kyrie. So it's like, all right, well, Boogie came back. He played a couple of games in the finals. I know he played some bad games, but – he got to get the rhythm back, so right. let's just throw a boatload of money at him, bring him over, and yeah. that's what you're gonna what you're gonna get. He's definitely gonna get, and Golden State is not gonna pay no that much money to 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 bring uh, Boogie back. What another team is gonna offer him? Yeah, um, there's too many teams with cap space. First off, yeah, and let's you know hypothetically, let's say <coughs> if it's a foregone conclusion that Kawhi is going to the Clippers, and then let's say Durant stays and opts in just to have that security for that one year while he rehabs. That's already the two biggest names off the market. So mm -hmm. now you still got the Knicks. Nets, Clippers, Lakers, all scrambling now, along with the other bottom teams who still have to spend a certain amount of money yeah. to reach a certain threshold because you still got to spend money. Yeah. He's going to sign somewhere. It's probably going to be on a bad team. He'll <laughs> get sure. his minutes. He'll get his numbers. But it, it, you know, he, it worked out for him. He'll, I can see him going back to New Orleans. AD gone. They need a center you know to what? fill in. They need, a free, they need somebody to play with Zion. I could. I wouldn't. I wouldn't even be mad that he he did play well uh, with with New Orleans, and they are going to need somebody to to run with uh, with Zion. He may go there. I mean, I don't know. I I have a feeling they're going to go really young, even after the trade with AD. I think like Holiday will probably be one of their few veterans. And then they'll just Unless go they really get rid young. of him too, because I think they're going to try to get rid of. Oh, I'm Holiday sure. Too. I'm sure they're going to try to yeah. unload everybody. But if it all goes the way David Griffin wants it to go, and he's talking about getting these multiple trade chips back for AD, they're yeah. going to go completely young. Yeah. And DeMarcus may not fit there, but there will be a team like Atlanta who might take a fly on him for three years because yeah. they're still developing their team. Um, Orlando might just throw a boatload of money at him and just say, hey, we need the name for now yeah. until we figure it out. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it'll be like those smaller teams that nobody really thinks about, for but sure, that'll sure. say, look, he'll go to four years at the max, and you'll just be our big attraction until we really figure this thing out. For sure, for sure. Now, I want to talk really quick about Kimba because he's one of the top guys that's up uh, this year. He uh, he came earlier today. He uh, he said that he wouldn't mind taking a pay cut to to stay uh, if it would have helped them build a team around him. 
I don't think that's, I don't, you know, I think that was just, you know, more for show than anything because I, I really can't see him taking less money to stay. You know, I, I, I can't see. What, what, what you think? That's, Should, a, he, that's a bony throw out there. That's a, I know I'm not getting super max from anybody. Yeah. So I'm going to offer my services to Charlotte. Hopefully they, they, they take care of me, you know. I yeah. think the only way he stays in Charlotte is if they offer him the super max. I don't know why he would want to stay in Charlotte. Like their the money, team that's is, it. That's but not even like the, the team is locked in as is. Like they don't have any upcoming money. Yeah, they, they don't have a bunch of like. It's not like next summer is like, oh, we can add something. Yeah. First of all, no one's going to Charlotte. <laughs> it's, it's not an attractive destination. That's first. <laughs> Secondly, they don't have the money anyway. They don't yeah. have the trade pieces to make a move. And you've already struggled there now for about seven years. Why wouldn't you explore other options? Even if it meant, all right, I'll take less money to go somewhere else and play with somebody and, and try to at least be in the playoffs consistently. Because yeah. I yeah. really, that might be the only difference between Kemba and Kyrie. Not to say Kyrie isn't a better player, but Kyrie's had so much more exposure. We yeah. automatically put him way ahead of Kemba. Yeah. yeah. But Kemba's a great ball handler. Three time all star. Yeah. You put, you put Kemba with LeBron in that same scenario, they, Kemba right. would have a ring too. Right. Yeah. Sure. They'll have a, a, a he's great just level a of success. Scorer, as well. yep. is Kyrie. Right. And he, but the difference is, he's played in the, like maybe two playoff series, whereas Kyrie yeah. went to three straight finals. Yeah. Yeah. Because of LeBron, so that's, right? Yeah, well, yeah, we know we definitely yeah, we, right. we figured that out uh, in Boston, and and a go, team that goes to Game Seven of the yeah. Eastern Conference Finals without you, <laughs> right? And then they make don't even make it out the second round, you know. So, but yeah, Kemba is Kemba. I, I, I'm loving what you know. I want to see where he's gonna go, where he ends up at. I think it'll probably be uh, in New York, though. I want to see him get his money. He's a good dude. He play hard every night. Yeah, he, he loyal. Right. I want to see him you know, get rewarded for that. And he's a guy we, we can't like. Sometimes we get caught up in this whole, oh, the guy isn't a winner because he hasn't won on the NBA level. We saw what he did in college as the guy. Yeah. Right? Now, we know it's a different game, but at least he has that winning spirit. He has that mentality of, like, you put me in that situation, I'm going to make the plays. Yeah. And that's why I would like to see him play on a better stage, somewhere where he can prove yeah, in he's, he's never had a team right. around him either. Yeah. So, you know, it's not you can't really compare somebody who's pretty much been by himself to with, his with entire career. Cody Zella and, and exactly. Kid Gilchrist. Before like, LeBron yeah. came back to Cleveland, Kyrie wasn't winning playoffs. Right. They weren't even making the playoffs. It was at the bottom of the Eastern Conference. So you can't really go by that. I feel like he got his respect, though, this year. He earned He got it. Yeah. By making the All-NBA team, that, right. that's everybody yeah. he, recognized. Like, you, des you deserve it. He earned, he earned, earned, he earned it. that paycheck. You know, so you gotta you, you gotta you gotta love it, man. I'm 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 happy for him. I hope I hope that he does come back to New York though. I yeah. like I wouldn't mind seeing him in New York. Actually, you know what I mean? Wouldn't even mind seeing him in, in LA, you know, running with Braun hey. either. Um I do think that the Lakers will ultimately trade for A D though. I know uh they were trying to hold uh Kuzma out of the trade deal, but right. I think uh, you know they'll they'll get it done. If it takes putting Kuzma in that deal, I think they're gonna wind up doing it because you got three years left with LeBron. You know, I don't. I can't even say three years at LeBron playing at the the top level. He's a top two player. I'll give him two strong years. So you kind of got to do what you got to do now if you're trying to win while LeBron is here. And if you make that trade for AD, it, it's a, it becomes a lot easier to bring another one of those top guys to to come to LA. So I think they do wind up getting it done sooner. And that's gonna become the tough part for them because I, you know, we've we've had this discussion plenty of times. AD and LeBron would be a very interesting pairing, but if you get them together and, they, and you give up everything that the Pelicans are asking for, you have nothing else. Nothing. Like you have stripped down the team and then you got to hope that you can sign a bunch of mid-level veterans that can help push you over the top. And well, that, that, I mean, that's basically the same team. That yeah, that's, that's the same team you had this year. If but you if you're that. bringing in, let's say so you, you are bringing in Kimba. So now, I mean, those three guys right there, that's enough to get Possibly. you a, a title. Possibly, yes. I, I'm, not, I'm not willing to say yes completely because I still think there's too much instability within the organization. Like, yeah. Frank Vogel, he just got hired a month ago. He's already a lame duck coach. Like, yeah. we already know. It's Jason Kidd. Right, right. Know, right. Know Jason Kidd we, we, like, the, the moment they go through their first three-game losing streak, it's going to be like, all right, so how long before Kidd takes <laughs> over? We, we know that already. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, that's one of them situations where, like, that could go really bad right away if the other pieces aren't there. Yeah. You start putting, LeBron just had his first real injury of his career. He's older. Anthony Davis has had multiple injuries. So if you banking on those two guys to carry you and you don't have the supporting cast, 
you're asking for it to really fall on its face and, and be like, all right, it yeah. just didn't work because we didn't have the pieces. And I think Golden State is a great example of you need a supporting cast. Right. Because yeah. you got Clay, you got Steph, you got Draymond, and their problem right now is depth. Yeah. Right. That's, yeah, that's a fact. Out and they're not deep enough to hang yeah. Toronto. It's not even yeah. about being a better team. Toronto's just deeper. Right. Yeah. They were already banged up going into the series, yeah. and then now he's out. Looney is out again. Iggy is, is hurt. And the rest of the guys just ain't performing. They're not producing anything. Right. I mean, Three years ago, when we looked at the Warriors, not only was it top heavy, but then we talked about Iggy that, yeah. and Livingston. You know what I'm saying? And, and Patrick Gold was on the team playing well. All those West. guys. Now you look at them, it's like, like you said, all right, so Durant's out. <laughs> Granted, that's huge. Yeah. But Looney's you still out. Still got three, three right. superstars, really, really. Right. Looney's out. And then Iggy ain't playing well and he's injured. And Livingston ain't playing well. Yeah. And, and you got to give way more minutes to Quinn Cook than you would want to play. <laughs> yeah. Him. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to find yourself in that situation of your Lakers. Yeah. You can see they're tired. You can see in the last two games, you can Steph see how tired. tired Golden State was, yeah. especially Steph after having to put up 47 in a loss, and then to come right back, you could tell he was gassed. You could tell his last game, which, you know, with the whole timeout controversy at the end of the game where, you know, they stopped Kawhi's uh, flow, you, you know, you gave Golden State a chance to rest, but they was looking gassed up until that point. Yeah. And, they don't uh, have no depth. And the West, that, the West is a gauntlet. You know, I yeah. think yeah. they in the past, Golden State's always benefited from the luck of somebody getting hurt mm -hmm. when they advanced in the rounds. And this year, everyone's healthy and everyone gave them their best shot. They had to go. Even yeah. Portland, yeah. they beat them, I think, 4 1. They, but they swept them, but they, they swept them every sorry. game. They, yeah. yeah, but they gave them their best so shot. So they, they, they still have, you, you, have, you have to work. You got to work. They yeah. had to work. Portland was a little, it was an easier series because they didn't have uh, Yerkick. But, uh, but they still had, you know, you still had to work because you're coming back from 17 ain't easy. <laughs> yeah. You and know, they had to do it three straight games. Yeah. Like, they really had to. Yeah, work they worked this year. They yeah. worked yep. this year. And then they took the huge break, but now you go against a Toronto team that's fully healthy, and these guys are playing. Van Fleet, after he had the baby, started balling. <laughs> yeah. You know, Abaka gave them six blocks in the game, 20 another game. Gasol's ha had his games. Danny Green had one good game. I'm hoping they can give him another game tonight so they can hurry and close this thing out. But uh, but the they've team has been they, playing well. They've got to close it tonight, though. Hey, if they go you seven, don't want to take that chance of going uh, going seven. I'll go with unless, unless Draymond gets a, another tech and he gets suspended <laughs> for game seven, in which case, then you maybe you might want it to go seven <laughs> and go back to, to Toronto and just close it at home. Because that now, if they don't have Draymond Green, that, you know, that's going to be, oh my goodness, it's going to look Steph real bad. game seven, though. Uh, yeah. You don't, don't want to see that. that. You don't want that. Yeah. So, and then also the way they lost game five, like blowing that lead late. Yep. Lowry missed. The last shot, obviously, we saw that it got blocked. Yeah. At, at, in live time, we thought it was just a terrible shot. <laughs> yeah. See later on, it got deflected. That was a long K pop. Yeah. Let it rain. Yeah, yeah. Wait for Larry to miss. Yeah. Yeah. But he had missed the big three, like, maybe a wide minute open. before that. Wide yeah. open. Oh, he been missing the whole series wide open yeah. and making a lot of dumb yeah. plays. So, yeah. Uh, so, mentally, you got to wonder, like, Abak has seen this before. Oh, yeah. Right? And mm -hmm. now Lowry's like, man, I had a chance to close it out. I didn't. Yeah, you don't if need you that. If you go tonight and you play bad, I don't know how you could have any confidence going back home for Game Seven. Mm -hmm. yeah. Other than Drake is on the sidelines. Man. Other than that, well, he's gonna be on the sidelines. I'm sure tonight because they're trying to close it out. <laughs> I mean, even his body language. You saw when he walked off the court, he was shaking his head like he can't believe they lost. Yeah, that game. that's one of those moments. No matter how you feel about human nature, takes over. You feel like we shouldn't even be on this flight back. To uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we, we should, should be, be celebrating yeah, right now with the fans, the champagne, yeah. and all that. Yeah. But I think where they will benefit from. Be I th the leadership of Kawhi because For sure. he understands he's been there before, you know. So he's gonna he's gonna be ready. He's gonna get those guys ready. Danny Green, you know, even though he's not playing well on the floor, but he's been in those situations before with the Spurs as well. And it's a lot of veterans, which is one thing I really do like about the Toronto team. Abaka, he's been to a finals before. He's he's played in the playoffs a lot, you know. So I think. Those guys will get them over the hump tonight because, I mean, they got to do it. But I think we're going to see the, the best Kawhi we've ever seen oh, yeah. this game I right mean, here. Better than what we've seen yeah. already? Better. He got to turn, turn it up. He's, he's shown that gonna he's win. a killer, man. Oh, I yeah. mean, everybody knew he was good, but nobody knew he was a killer. Like, well, he's I had, proven it this year. I had, I had him as, as number two after LeBron yeah, right before the injury. Player, right. But it's different between well, no, I, the greats and showing that, yo, I'm, a, I'm well, just as good, I'm a killer, and I could put a team on my back. Before like, he got hurt, he was a finals MVP and back-to-back -back defensive player of the year. So he, you got Tim Duncan, you got right, everybody to right. carry. That was old Tim Duncan. Carrying, it doesn't matter. Carrying Tim Duncan. Team, it, it doesn't matter. Well, now, yeah, because now it's, it's a little bit different because he is the number one guy on the team. But uh, it's not like he was with Tim Duncan in his prime, though. Yeah, yeah but, I, no, I understand it, but I'm saying he got he had a supporting cast. That's yeah, no, he did. Yeah, I mean, and he had he had you know arguably Mono, the greatest coach of all time Tony, with with, with Pop. Right. Yeah. You had Pop, you had Mono, you had Parker. So he definitely did. You had Duncan, all those guys had won a, a Finals MVP yeah. before. Yeah. Danny Green on that team. I'll tell you one thing: if he had one of those guys in Toronto, this 
series would have been over already. Yeah, right. for sure. And that's why we say, like, I yeah. agree. I think this is Carrying his best him. work. Yeah. yeah. And then you look at, again, we talk about the gauntlet. That Philly series was tough. Tough. That Milwaukee yeah, he, series oh, was tough. Brutal. And he put it on his back right. to get him yeah. out of there. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. That game to. seven, he threw, he took 40 shots. Yeah. Yeah. He had to take 40 shots. Playing hurt and everything. And the irony of this whole situation is, I don't it was a couple years back when KD had said, I don't think quite that good. He's playing in a good system. Right. And he said, I think Paul George is better than him. Right. And look at it well, now. You know, he's up against KD. I mean, you know, we know KD's right. out, but yeah. he's showing his right. worth. Like, he, I am that good. He is, I, I really think he's dragging him to this point. Yeah. And he had a decent game seven against Philly. They get bumped in the second round. And yeah. The story ends right then and there. For sure. You know what I'm saying? But he dragged them to that point. Yeah. They're down 2 old to Milwaukee. And when any, anybody else would have panicked, he sat up there calmly and said, when they said, where do you go from here? We go back to Toronto. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like he not And only that Kawhi like, the Kawhi way, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we go back to, right. We go back to yep. Toronto. Exactly. And then they went four straight. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, I think this is his best work. I think this for sure. solidifies him as if not number one, number two. Yeah. I still have KD ahead of him. And I think as fans we got robbed because it would have been great to see them battle for, it sure. out for six or seven games. But maybe because I mean the teams would have just been completely lopsided had Durant been playing though, so it might not have been. Uh, no, nah, I think that, been the same. We can't say that because like, like Golden State is fully healthy versus yeah, Toronto. Yeah, yeah. You think it's going? That's a seven game right, series. So seven game series, even for sure. right? I think it's at Kawhi's least a six. Proven that he I think could, it's at least a six. Yeah, he's proven it against the team without KD though. I don't yeah, right, so, thought Milwaukee was supposed to bounce them in five or six. What was it? Yeah. It was no excuse in game one because Golden State had a ten day rest. Yeah, so they were healthy then. Yeah. As healthy as they probably would have been. Because remember, they <coughs> played game one. They lose game one. They bounce back. They win game two. But Clay misses game three. Toronto blows them out. No, that's what I'm saying. But if we're talking about a fully healthy Golden State versus a fully healthy Toronto. I think Toronto, it at least goes six. At least goes six. Because we, we still can't discount. Like, Toronto has been so balanced in the series. Every one of their the veterans has had one of their moments. Yeah. Lowry has had two games in the series where he scored over 20. Mm -hmm. Ibaka had the six block game. The Souls had some good games. Van Fleet been born. Right, they Van did. Fleet. But so, we're also looking at it through glasses where Kevin Durant has not been there, so we don't really know. We can't say if this it would have been the same thing because, yeah, guys playing great because you don't have to worry about Kevin Durant. That's a like huge right. like, takeaway from Golden but, State. So you don't think Kawhi could have at least won two games in this series? No, it's possible he could, right. he could have, but I just uh, the team, I think, would have been so much better Obviously, with Kevin Durant on the right. floor, things I think everything changes with Kevin right. Durant. So I can't really, I can't say, yeah, they would have definitely went six. I don't know if it would, if it would have went past five. To be honest, if I KD think, plays, I, mean, I think it would have went I, six. Yeah, you got to, you, you kind of discredit in Toronto for what they were. I agree with you. Would have been, it would have been because you know. I say even that I'm discrediting Toronto. It's just that how great that, that Golden State team is. I mean, that's for sure. they were built in a way where they are like Kevin Durant makes. A, a huge difference. A dynasty team already yeah. pretty much <laughs> to a whole right. other he, plateau. That's he like makes them an like, all-time great. Like team. Hakeem joining yeah. the Bulls when when wow. Jordan was there. I mean, Mike, they was already like <laughs> exactly. They won. It was seven. No, no, but no, no, stop. Like, no, 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 no. Let's not compare two seasons of Golden State to those <laughs> those runs that the Bulls had. Like that's not even the same thing. Yeah, yeah. That's not even the same thing. They dominated. Right. Bulls. Mike what and I'm them, saying, but on. imagine the, the, oh, the best player in basketball. Mike and them. First of all, Mike and them was never down 2-1 in no series. no series. They never went 7 in any series. Golden State, we had seen them down 2-1 in multiple series even before Kevin Durant came. They For had sure. gone 7 games before Kevin Durant even came. They were a good team. He made them a great team. He makes them a special team. I agree I mean, with you. I would say that 73 Toronto, wins is a great team. Golden State, Golden State is not down 3 2 with Kevin Durant. No, right there. it's flipped. I think yeah, tonight it would have been flipped. It would have yeah. been 3 2 Golden yeah, State. I agree with you in that aspect. Deal. You're right about but that. But ultimately, as fans, what we're robbed of is the matchup of Kawhi, Kawhi and, and Durant because I, yeah, going at it for 35 to 40 minutes tonight. Yeah. yeah. That's what we're robbed of. Yeah. yeah. Not even the series itself. Just, yeah. just, robbed of that. just those two superstars. Right. It was a point in game five where I think. Kawhi was just going off for like a two minute stretch, yeah. and it was like it would have like, been great to see Durant now on the other going back and forth. that. Yeah. Because, because I mean, we're talking about two and three or one and two or however you want to put it, but whatever your ranking is, they're yeah. neck and neck right there. So the and we haven't seen the two best players going head up in in the in the finals. No, like we that. haven't in a long time. Yeah. So it would have been it would have been it would have been nice to, and, to see it. Yeah, and, and like I said to like on that point, we talk about. Like LeBron's classic performances, right? To me, LeBron's best performance is that first year against Golden State, when he didn't have Kyrie and Kevin Love, and he averaged a triple double in the finals. Yeah, they lose in six to Golden State ultimately. Yeah, but think about how great LeBron was in that finals, going up against that young Golden State team. 
So even if Kawhi and him lose in six, yeah. it would have been the same thing. We would have looked at it like, man, Kawhi's going up against yeah, we, yeah, we KD, Steph, and Clay by himself and averaging 30 in the series. Six games. Yeah. You give him one other all star. Can they, I ask they you something real quick? So I had this argument with my boys, and um, I had a. I felt like this finals doesn't rank up there with some of the classic finals, and they felt that it did. It matched up with some of the classic finals, like the Cavaliers and Golden State finals and, you know, Jordan. And, do you guys feel like this is a classic finals? I don't. I don't. It's, it's a rough one because there's so many injuries to, right. to key players. I, you know what I'm saying? I, it's, it's definitely been exciting. And, you know, Canada, like, they, I think they, like, shattered the, 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 the records as far as ratings go. I know, you know, they were, the big talk was, you know, ratings are down here. But when you if, if you could actually count in the numbers in Toronto, the, um, the ratings would probably be about average of, you know, NBA Finals numbers. But just the fact that you're missing that star power. Like even, I think, if, if they go six games and Durant plays, I think then it's, it, it's there. But just the fact that, you know, Durant missed the whole series out of them 12 minutes. You had Clay missing the game. I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think so. Yeah, it's not up there. One, is too many what ifs because of the injuries. Um, but two, like, we've had a couple blowouts in it, too. Like, we've had series, for example, the, the first year that um, KD was in Golden State and they played the Cavs. Even though Golden State won in five, every one of those games was close. Like, yeah. we remember that KD iconic shot in game three that put them up 3-0. But every game in that series was tight, and it was a matter of who makes the most plays within the last five minutes. Yeah. Like, to me, that's a better series than this, star power-wise, and then just how close the games were. Um, the seven-game series where the Cavs come back against Golden State was better than this because, again, that was another close series. Even though they were down 3-1, they were there every game. They yeah. were close. It was just that Golden State made a couple more plays than yeah. that. Um, but then if you go back just through history, like, there are a lot of series to me that were better than this one. For sure, for yeah. sure. It's a good series. It's exciting because Toronto is their first time there. Um, you have the we, whole country. Of, right, you have the country. country. But one of the reasons I was interested in seeing Toronto against them because I thought Toronto actually had the better storylines. Because Kawhi, we don't know what would have happened if he didn't get injured that last game with the Spurs against yeah. Golden State when they were up big. Yeah. Like, he may have had this type of performance in that for series. Sure, for sure. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like he's just um, going by game one. Right. <laughs> and then, you know, and then you throw in the other veterans like Abaka's had his, you know, his, his yeah. moments against Golden State. Mm -hmm. Gasol, he played them one year in the Western Conference Finals. So they were just better storylines. Yeah. But I don't think it's a better series. Yeah. I told them, I said, maybe if Golden State is able to get it to game seven, then we probably could say right. something because they battled back without yeah. Durant. And that's a different right. storyline. But I said. Because game seven is always yeah. a whole different energy. Other than that, this is not something I'm watching a year from now. I'm, I'm looking at it. Yeah. yeah, we know who won. What's right. on? On right. yeah. TV. Yeah. It, this ain't it. coming on NBA TV yeah. anytime soon. Unless now, you're like they, a diehard Toronto fan. <laughs> right. like diehard Golden State right. fan. If they have now, if they have another classic game tonight, yeah. then that changes the Change narrative. The narrative. Yeah. Game but, seven. Now you got to go back to Toronto for game seven. Right. It, but if, if, if it ends tonight, yeah, it's I like, think it's hats off to Toronto. They right, hats cool. off. Next season. And, and yeah. immediately we'll be like, all right, so what you going to do, Kawhi? Yeah. You running the back or you out? <laughs> Basically. We're going we to get back into some more final circle in a minute because the game is going to be on in a second. But uh, we did have a couple of NBA players uh, pop out to ball for peace. Uh, you know, going back to the Lakers, one of them played for the Lakers. He had uh, he had his uh, a, a story to uh, pass. Don't don't do that. Don't do that, man. Don't do that, man. <laughs> with Kobe going back and forth. Uh, but uh, we, we we had we had Smush Parker chop it up with uh, Emerald uh, for a couple of minutes at, at uh, Balling for Peace. So we're gonna let y'all watch that interview. We're gonna take a quick break. Make sure you guys are following us, uh, Real Fans, RealTalk.com, Facebook.com forward slash Real Fans, Real Talk, Twitter, Instagram at Real Fan Talk, and subscribe to that youtube channel youtube.com forward slash for the fans productions that's where you get all the exclusive stuff that don't necessarily make it to the show it goes straight to the youtube channel and on the website so y'all make sure y'all following us on all that social media and uh when y'all when, when y'all ready in the back fellas y'all just let us know and uh we're gonna rock out let y'all talk to you know talk to emma for a second it's getting crazy out there so whenever y'all just let us know though you know we out here you know just taking our time there we go well, it feels good to be a part of this uh, this event. Um, H2O put together something uh, something special here. He's been doing it for five years. This is my first time with it. And, um, you know, I've been giving back to the community uh, through my nonprofit, Smush Aspires. So, you know, me and him connected through social media. And, um, you know, he invited me out. So, I'm, you know, I'm just, uh, just very appreciative that he did that for me. And now tell us how 
did basketball affect you as your childhood? I know it kept me out of trouble, it kept me focused. What are, what is any stories that helped you when you were a child? Well, you know, growing up here in New York City, there's a lot of, uh, I'm just gonna say, bad negative influences. And uh, basketball was a great distraction from the streets for me. You know, it kept me off the streets, it kept me out of gangs, it kept me out of the wrong relationships. Um, so basketball for me, you know, saved my life. And you know, you hear people say that all the time, but it was literally something that, you know, kept me busy so that I didn't get my idle hands into trouble. And lastly, I know you have to go, but I know recently you got to speak out about, you know, your side of the story in regards to Kobe Bryant. How did it feel to get that out and let everyone hear your side of the story? It was a setup. <laughs> they set me, no. Um, it, it was, it's not about trying to get my side of the story out. Um, sometimes, you know, I'll get asked a question and I'll just, you know, tell the truth. That's pretty much it. I don't make up stories. I don't embellish anything. It's the truth. It is what it is. What it is. But that's what under the bridge for me. You know, I'm moving on. He's moved on. I've been, you know, what? What's this going on? Like ten years uh, from removed from the NBA. So, I'm I'm, I'm building something better now. Bigger and better now. And wish you the best of luck. Thank you. Thank you. This is Deontay the Bronze Bummer Wilder, heavyweight champion of the world, and you're watching Real Fans Real Talk. Face facts. What up? What up? Real fans, real talk.com. The Arthur Domus, Trip Young, and intern Tom. For the white and black fans, Asia to Manhattan. I get all my facts from my bro, Mark the Stats, man. If you're not Welcome back, real fans, real talk. Shout out to Smush Parker. Uh, former NBA guard with the Los Angeles Lakers. He pulled up to Ball for Peace, amongst others. The MVP was there as well. Um, you know, it, it's been a great, uh, great, great couple of weeks, man. We've been out here moving and grooving, and we, we have not stopped yet. We still got a whole lot to go on uh, the, the Real Fans Real Talk charity tour. We got some events coming up later this year. We're going to be back at the Barclays Center in December for the 2K tournament. Just spoke to Joe's the other day, so we're just working out all the details. Plus, you know, we got to wait for the, the schedule to come out, so we we can tell y'all what game we're going to rock out at. Um, but we're going to get into that in a second. We got a fan mail question. Gerald from the Bronx writes in, what should the Knicks' backup plan be? Um, I'm just going to start right. First of all, the backup plan should still be Kevin Durant. <laughs> I don't care what you say. The backup plan, I don't care if he's hurt right now. The backup plan is all for the K KD that four-year max deal so he can just sign. And He's already in New York. He's already had the surgeries here. He got his property out here now. You know, his partner, uh, Rich Kleiman, everybody's out here. The gang, Ronda Clarion's out here. Right. You know, he might as well Roy just. Live, he's already, Roy Live, he's already he out here. Yeah, he's yeah. You might as well just come on. That should be the plan B. Um, but. If uh, if if Kevin Durant maybe opts in or he decides, you know, to do something else, and and there's no hope of the Knicks getting uh, Kevin Kevin Durant, then I mean you just kind of go down the list and see who else is available. We throw some money at Kawhi, nah. see if he'll come. Anybody at that point? Nah, I think if, if obviously Plan A, B, and C should be um, Kevin Durant. You you go all in. I'm serious. You go all in. You have to. You bring him in. And then you kind of figure it out from there. Like, all right, we know you're going to be out for a year, so should we just focus on the young guys while you recoup? Yeah. And then we'll hit free agency again next summer with you and possibly R.J. Barrett and Kevin Knox, you know, and Dennis Smith. Uh, but I think if Kevin Durant does opt in, if you're the Knicks, you play it smart, you take your time and you say, look, we're going to draft R.J. He's a future point guard of the team. And you let the young guys rock. And you go with the baby Knicks pretty much for a year. Yeah. Wow, and then wow. you wait. Yeah, because... Listen, sometimes we get caught up in this whole, oh, you got to get this guy, you got to get that guy. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of other all-stars that are going to be available. That's how the Knicks got jammed up in the past. Right. Mm -hmm. That's exactly how we got jammed up in the past. There are other all-stars available. So you take your time and you wait and you see what becomes available. I think Bradley Beal is going to be a trade piece very soon, who I like him a lot. Mm -hmm. um, if AD isn't traded to the Lakers before the season starts, you maybe try to pull try the trigger to close to the all-star break. For sure. But if you can't get KD, don't panic and throw a bunch of money at Tobias Harris and Boogie Cousins. Yeah. That's not what we waited for. This summer. <laughs> Tobias from New York, though. Uh, New York. We good on that. We, we, we straight on that. <laughs> shout out to Tobias shout Harris. Shout out to Tobias, man. man. Uh, not shout, shout out to Tobias, York, but I, I'm just saying, like, uh, we did say you want to come home and play. Yeah. Uh, Brooklyn will take you gladly. <laughs> <laughs> They'll take you gladly. We good. I think you build. I think you build. I think you just build from the draft, man. You just build and just wait your turn. Yeah. All the successful teams now, you see Sacramento, 
you know, you <laughs> see Orlando, all those teams, Atlanta made the playoffs this year, you know. Yeah. They build from the draft, you know, with young talent, you know. They got to figure out what they're going to the, do because the problem with the Knicks up. in the past, they've always tried to bandage up these pack, these patches that they had with all star players and, and big names. Yeah. Big names. And it's just like, you just got to start it over, build it to scratch. First of all, nobody yeah. wants to play under James Dolan. Yeah. That's, that's the main, that's the real problem. That's become, no one yeah, wants to. Yeah. Every player doesn't want to deal with James Dolan, his horrible management, his horrible presence. Mm. See what he did to Charles Oakley. And it's like, every yeah. player looks at it like, Charles Oakley, a legend. You do right. that to Charles Oakley, what you going to do to me? You banning fans for life because they told you to sell a team, right. yeah. which you should do anyway. <laughs> he was only, you know, So being that's the number one problem, but you just build from the draft, you know. Yeah. Get as many picks, as young talent as you can. They have a young core, um, and they have, you know, a lot of rookies that played well last season. I think Mitchell Robinson, you know, in a couple of years, he's going to be a really good big man, Second really good, great defensive team. big man. Alonzo Trier, who, you know, who was, I mean, that was just like a give me yeah. to get him. He played really well. You know, Knox, you know, he's, he's coming on. He, had, he dealt with the injuries last year, but, he, you know, we saw the, the spots that he can be a, a, a good player. So now you bring in RJ, who is a top level and, you know, He's, a lot of people he's forget. Some work. He can do some work out there. A lot of people overlook. I shouldn't even say forget. They overlook that R.J. Barrett was the number one rated college player last year. Yeah. It's just that Zion has such an impactful. Because he's a human highlight. Right. right. Yeah. But That's the thing. R.J. was groomed for this. And like yeah. what he said that day was so true. Like, I'm, I'm built for this. This yeah. is what I've been preparing yeah. for. And yeah. I think you throw R.J. in there with Mitchell Robinson, with Dennis Smith Jr., with Knox, Let's with Iso Zo. Right. Now you got the young pieces. We'd be like, all right. Are they championship caliber? No. Yeah. Are they playoff? They Probably not. But are they exciting? And yeah, now sure. if, if you're a veteran player, you're looking at this like, you know what, I wouldn't mind playing with them young boys right there. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I keep me young. Right. <laughs> right. I'm out there. But so do I, you do you sign KD to play with those young guys? Or because if you sign KD, you gotta get another all star to play with him. You can't put KD yeah, out there. Yeah, well, boy. if it's KD is going to sign in New York, somebody's coming. I don't care if they got to wait a year. They'll wait a year yeah. to play with with, okay. with KD. And depending on who the other guy is, whether it be a trade, because, I mean, to get Bradley Bill or to get AD, some of those guys are going to have right. to get moved. But, you know, K KD is not coming alone if, if he comes. Somebody's going to be like, you know what, I'll wait it out. As a matter of fact, you know, if they make the right moves, we might even be good enough without KD to make a deep run at least this year. And then, you know, now you bring KD, KD back, KD. then mm -hmm. we go, we we in the finals the following season. Yeah, I, same strategy I talked about with the, with the Lakers. If I'm the Knicks, one, obviously we want KD. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to gut my roster for Anthony Davis. For sure. Right, especially knowing that KD's not playing this year anyway. Like, yeah. I don't want Anthony Davis out there putting unnecessary miles on his legs just for the sake of like, hey, but look, we got him. Yeah. Nah, let's play it smart. So if KD already knows he's going to set out, if he's willing to say, look, I'll come now, sign a couple veterans just mm -hmm. to keep it respectable. Go get a J.J. Reddick. Yeah. You know, go get a respectable guy to just so that we can be competitive. So when I come back, mm -hmm. now we have the pieces to really make the move. Yeah. yeah. You know, but it's, it's about what he wants. You know, yeah. he may just say, I'm I'm going to opt back in and rehab in Golden State for you. Most important part yeah. is just to learn from your mistakes, from learn from the past. You can't keep letting history repeat itself. You gutted your roster to get Carmelo in. Well, now you got to gut the ownership. <laughs> <laughs> you get the ownership out of I will say, I, I, and I agree with you guys because I'm, I'm not a fan of Dolan, but I will say that I think this front office has done it the right way. Yeah. You know, yeah. Mitchell Robinson was a second round pick. That's yeah. good scouting. Iso Zo was a free agent yeah. rookie. So yeah. that's scouting. That's understanding, yeah. like, I think with Scott Perry, better. yeah, with, with Perry, with Mills, Allen Houston, what they're doing is they're really taking the time and they, they're identifying certain characteristics they want in their players. Yeah. And, you know, again, you add RJ to this, I think it's a nice young core. If you can get KD, great. I would love to have KD. But if we can't, it's not in years past where we're sitting around when we yeah. miss out on other free agents. And then you we look at the anything. roster and you're like, but we still ain't got nothing. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Got talent on the roster right. this time around. And worst case scenario, you end up in the draft again next year and you Absolutely. get another talented player. Right. Philly that did. that might, be the, Philly, might right. be the best case in there, actually, because if you, if you do sign KD this year while he's hurt and, and the team is out. bad, and then you get another top pick, you yeah. know, the, hey, that could be could be a San Antonio, yeah. Tim Duncan kind of right. situation yeah. right there. Philly you know? tank, they got young talent, and then all the veterans were dying to come to Philly, play with MBU yeah. and Simmons and stuff like that. So. Yep. And you break great point with Philly. How sick is Philly, though, man, right? Like, they had a chance to trade for Kawhi. Imagine Kawhi with Simmons and Embiid. Well, Toronto definitely wouldn't be. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, we know that. But I'm yeah. just, like, just imagine. Like, you saw how good Jimmy yeah. looked there. So imagine if that was uh, oh, Kawhi man. in that spot. Yeah. Oh, man. With those two young boys. Yep. Oh, man. Would have been, It would have been even they better. In the finals, yeah. Oh, sure. man. Yeah. With Reddick, 
And there is right. yeah. in the finals. Well, listen, I'm, I'm gonna keep praying for for the Knicks, man. For you, uh, shout you, out to we Gerald. know you're not praying for the Knicks. I, I'm not. I'm really not. We I'm know not, you're I'm not praying for the Knicks. I'm not. Man. I want. Sometimes I'm gonna you got a trip out on his. No, but I don't think. Know. I don't want. No, I don't want them to be that bad. I feel them because you know how it's like. All right, yeah, I like. I be embarrassed by them sometimes. You know when you be like, you don't even like the Knicks. <laughs> I know, but I can still be embarrassed by them. I'm not a Knicks fan either. Basketball is great when New York teams are good. When the Knicks are good, I would. I, listen, I want to see the Knicks and the Nets good because I want to see them play in the playoffs. Right. Because you know one thing about New York is all about bragging rights, especially, you know, being on the court yeah. and you talking, I want to see them go out in the playoffs three, four, five years, six years, you know, I want to, I want to see that. Like, it's, it's good when we saw the, the Yankees and the, and the Mets play right. in the World Series or when they play in the Subway Series and both teams are, are good. They split the series, out, by the way. We take uh, pride in that, by yeah. the way. We split that's, that's the highlight of their career. That's hey, the highlight hey, of the right. Mets' career. Uh, uh, it's the season, don't say the career. <laughs> I, the season. We've been in a couple World Series. We got a couple yeah. chances. When the last time y'all was in the World Series, who y'all lost to? 86. Oh, last time we were in the World Series? Yeah. We lost to the Warriors. And then before that, y'all lost to the Yankees, right? Right. Okay, let's make sure. Did y'all beat the Yankees in the World Series? We only played y'all one time. (laughs) But y'all lost, though. Yeah. All All right, right. thank you. But this year we split. Listen, this on on the two games. Yeah, if, if y'all had swept us, you would have bragged about it. You would have started I, the show bragging I, about I, it. I would have. I see. All right, I then. definitely would have pulled you out on your bluff. Why wasn't on the rundown trip? Why because, we can't get no love on the rundown, man? Because they're not even. Clip, they're like we, in like I didn't want to embarrass you too. Next week? They're in like we last. Split. They're in last, last place. place. We're in third place. Now listen, third place. if you ain't first, you last. Okay, third place. That's all I'm saying. But listen, we split with y'all. Either way, it's New York. Y'all the hottest team in baseball. We split with y'all. Big city. Yo, you know how many injuries we got. We got injuries too. We y'all just had a, a guy fall off a horse and break his ankle. Forget about that. That was our guy. That's our big money guy. What was he doing riding a horse? He had just finished watching an episode of Narcos. And he out here. No, he was listening to Old Town Road uh, and lost that, his mind. Had his wranglers on. He paid listen, this dude, damn it, thirty-two million listen, man, dollars. Man. Either way, like I said, New York, New York, big city of dreams. But uh, you know, every, every so often we like to step away from the court or the field or the, the rink. And, uh, you know, we, we like to get into the world of entertainment, and sometimes we like to hobnosh with the celebs and the stars. So we stopped by the, uh, the Shaft premiere uh, the other day. We actually we, we got a chance to talk to Dwight Howard. We were trying to see where he was going, but he said he's going to stay in, uh, in Washington. But you're going to see that all that in a second. But we spoke to Samuel Jackson, uh, Regina Hall, Damon John. You know, he out there, shark tanking it up. You know, so uh, you know, we, we like we gonna show y'all real quick. We shout out to uh, McKenzie. We had our correspondent. That cookie out there. Did out she there say anything running? about magic and what's going on out there, in LA? That, I couldn't put that on the on the on. Oh, the, that was private she said, But what, she said it was gonna be good. Though. Everything is gonna be okay. good. All but right. when I asked her what was the best sports show, y'all gonna see in a second. Yo, Cliff, run that run that video, please, so they could they could know what Miss Cookie Johnson said about Real Fans Real Talk and who the best sports show is. Let them know, man. They need to know about that, Cliff. Real fan, real talk. Real fans, real talk.com. The Arthur Domus trip young and intern time. For the white and black fans, Asia to Manhattan. I get all my facts from my bro, Mark the Stats Man. If you're not too- Hi, my name is Mackenzie Vickers, and we're here in New York City for the Shaft premiere, which will be hitting theaters June 14th. Stay tuned. Uh, this is my question for you. What has, um, what type of influence has this movie been on in your life? Well, I'm from Harlem, and um, when you think of Harlem, you think of art, you think of creativity, and you most definitely think of fashion. So I think the movie has inspired so much fashion, so much creativity. It's just kind of, you know, and not only fashion and creativity, but even a whole language for our culture. All day today, I've been calling people jive turkeys. (laughs) So hopefully in the 2019 adaptation, they say jive turkeys, because that's been my phrase all day. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You are the um, the example of a true entrepreneur, hustler. I just respect everything you do. What do you have as far as just a piece of advice for those that are just trying to just promote um, something that they feel passionate about? Uh, they're trying to promote something they're passionate about and how to turn it into... How to accelerate that. Yeah. Uh, don't take out any money to do it. Uh, you know, just uh, really shoestring it. Create that following and you know that if you're doing something, you obviously see a pain or something missing in the market. Yeah. Find all the people that agree with you that that pain is there because they'll get behind you and they'll be the best ambassadors ever. Make all your mistakes for the first three to five years and then at that point decide if it's a hobby or decide you're going to take it to the next level. But don't bring in all the capital, don't mortgage everything, don't quit your day job. Just do it, double down on your day job. You do your day job and that is your other day job. If you do that, after five or six years, even if you fail, you'll go, I, I put it all on the line. Even if you fail, you'll go, I put it all on the line, and I know that now I can survive because I didn't ruin my credit, 
And if you start to win, you have majority of company and you didn't give it all away. Sorry about that. And just also um, another question, what has this franchise um, been for you just as far as an influence? Well, I'll be, I'll be very honest. I, I, I had only seen number one at first and then um, I coming here, I wanted to go see the Samuel Jackson one. But number one was big inspiring to me because I remember when my mother took me to see the movie and that was the first time I saw an African-American male who wasn't a pimp or drug dealer and he was in a positive role and he was enforcing things. I remember that day my mother said, you know what, if you can see a man like that, one day uh, African-American male is going to be the president. And for a little young African-American male to see that in a positive role, it, it had a profound effect on me. And just my last question, are there any up-and-coming uh, projects that you have? Yeah, you know what? I have a couple of tracks coming out that are my speaking and my motivational speeches that somebody scored. I'm not a rapper, I'm not a music artist, I'm none of that. But one day I was listening to the great speech by Martin Luther King, and it was on his MLK Day, and somebody played a beat to it, and I was like, I want to work out with, to this for the rest of my life. And if you hear one of my regular speeches, you... You heard it once, you heard it forever. But once you hear a rhythm to it on the bass, then I want somebody to think about that on the train, on the plane, getting up, going to the gym, about to go to work and kill it and make something with themselves. So, you know, being a motivational speaker, um, you know, I, I, I love just inspiring people. Thank you so much, and you definitely motivated me throughout the years. Thank you. Hi, how are you doing this evening? How are you? So what has this movie been um, as, as far as the influence in your life? Uh... If at all. Uh, well, I wouldn't say this movie has had a, a real influence on my life, but uh, I grew up watching uh, Shaft, and I thought it was cool, you know. Uh, not that one, the one with uh, uh, Samuel Jackson. Uh, I think Busta Rhyme was on the year. That was a real, I liked that movie a lot, so um, I can't wait to see how this one turns out. Another question, where are you playing next year? I'm with the Wizards right now. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. All right, nice meeting you. So what was your experience working in this film? It was wonderful. We had a blast. I mean, they have great co-stars, and they were truly wonderful to work with. So I had a blast. I loved it. Is there um, any piece of advice that you have for upcoming um, actresses that are trying to, you know? I always just say study. You know what I mean? Yeah. Study so that when your opportunity comes, you're great. Like, you don't have to worry about when. I always feel like if you're good and you're good at your craft, then eventually, you know what I mean? Like, patience. Yeah. Patience and, and study. Just my last question, is there anything in this process that you still get nervous about? Oh, of course. I'm nervous every time I do a project. Really? Of course. Every time I start a set, yeah. every time I start a job, I'm always nervous. I'm all, my agent's here. I'm always like, Andrew, I don't want him to... I'm like, Andrew, did anybody call? I'm always hoping I don't get fired. Thank you so much for your time. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you. How were you able to embody that character? Was it natural for you or was it... <laughs> it's fun for me. Uh, it gives me an opportunity to, you know, stretch myself in an interesting sort of way and be, you know, a little more confident, a little more daring, you know, to do stuff you don't normally do in your life. My last question, as far as the most recent events with Holly Berry and she's standing up for black press, how do you feel about that? Well, I feel we should, you know, stand up for everybody who's trying to do what they do. And, you know, as long as you guys are here, we're gonna, you know, do what we can to help you get where you gotta go. Thank you so much. Great. Yes, thank right. you. Thank you so You're much. Welcome. Have a good one. So tonight I had the pleasure of interviewing Samuel L. Jackson along with Regina Hall and a plethora of movie stars. The movie Shaft comes out in theaters June 14th. My name is Mackenzie Vickers. Stay tuned. This is Deontay the Bronze Bummer Wilder, heavyweight champion of the world, and you're watching Real Fans Real Talk. Face facts, what up? What up? Real Fans Real Talk.com. The Arthur Domus tricked young and intern Tom. For the white and black fans, Asia to Manhattan. I get all my facts from my bro, Mark the Stats, man. If that was a that was a fun one, man. Shaft, man. Shout out to Samuel Jackson, man. That's that man be working, yo. That's that's the he got with the the highest uh, grossing movies of all time, because you know he been in every movie known to man. So he on the list. Shout out to Samuel Jackson, man. Congrats on on, on Shaft. Yandy, uh, Dwight Howard pulled up for a second to talk with us. Um, yeah, man, big big things. I told y'all we we everywhere. We not just you know on the court. You know we, it's, it's bigger than sports, man. We got a whole lot going on outside, and, and we just gonna keep bringing it to you guys at home. We are gonna be bringing the people that you uh that you guys want to see. Um, again, you know NBA finals is going down, so we all a little anxious right now. We gonna out of here. We running. We out of here. Yeah, yeah. After the studio, we gotta get that game, man. <laughs> we up out of here. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm I'm hoping the Warriors win tonight and force a seven. I'm not ready to bury the champs yet. I'm like ready. I, I, I've been ready to get through. Yo, we know <laughs> this is personal for you. It is. <laughs> Listen, after I signed my four-year business deal with the Lakers, that's, that's it. That's what it was. The goal was get them out of there, and I, you know, and, and 
first of all, it sucks that that KD went down the way he did. But I, KD going down may have been the best thing for the Lakers. So for sure. you know, and I think uh, next season, though, e either way, I think the league is going to be a lot more competitive, um, depending on on how these uh, these free agents uh, fall out and how these trades go. Mm -hmm. But um, but I do think the Lakers uh, will be back, and I think LeBron is going to be right back in the mix of things in the playoffs, going deep into the playoffs next year. Because I mean, if you look at the way things kind of went this season, they could have probably went deep into the into the playoffs this year. I don't think they would have beat Golden State, but I think they would have. Think they would have went deep. deep? Oh, yeah. I don't know. About yeah, that. I don't, yeah, yeah. I mean, we, that roster from the beginning, summertime, just wasn't it. They were in fourth place. It. Yeah, but it was still going to be tough. The tough. matchups, matchups were going to be tough. One thing you realize once you when you watch the playoffs, you realize you need shooting to survive. Yeah, they they they, they could have. Every team, if you're not going to outshoot Houston, Portland, how did Portland survive, get by three point shot? Right. Damian Lillard. Houston, bunch tough. of threes. You got to shoot three. You got to yeah, shoot three. I think they would. I think LA would have beat Portland. Oof, I don't know about that. I think they. I think they could have. Could have beat Denver as well. I don't think they would have beat Denver. Yeah. Denver didn't even Denver. make it to the to the finals, to the conference finals. That doesn't. Dem, what does that mean? Because yeah. they didn't make. It they, is that LeBron's they lost a tough on a series whole, a whole against Portland. Yeah. They yeah. lost a tough but series. LeBron's to Portland. greatness is on a whole nother and, level. And honestly, and just playoff basketball is similar to boxing, where styles make fights. Denver would have played Golden State way better than Portland did. Oh, for sure, for sure. Because of Millsap. Because yeah. of the joke. And they like to run and gun. Yeah. Right. Their matchup, they could have presented problems that Golden State really didn't have answers for. I would have still picked Golden State to beat them because yeah. they were an inexperienced yeah. team. But, I mean, the way the Joker was playing in the playoffs? Yeah. Yeah, no, he plays it. They, they, play, they play really well. We see how the big man tandem of Toronto is giving Golden State trouble now. So imagine Millsap and the Joker. Yeah. Playing them, and Lillard basically played by himself in that play. Yeah, I think I mean it would have been a it would have been a longer series if they played Denver, but ultimately they would have lost. But I'm just man, it's just I think LeBron the Lakers would have got out the first man. round and out of it. LeBron is great because you see what happened. It, him departing from the Eastern Conference, you see how relieved everyone in the East was when LeBron. Oh yeah. Left. Yeah. He had the East in a chokehold for I would have liked years. to see him play in the East this year, though. It was, it was Bro, like I when Jordan been. retired for the first time, and everybody, oh, we, we got a chance, we got a time, we got to go now, right now. It opened up. But I would have liked to see him go in the East because – these teams, we saw how these teams matured. Like, Philly really matured from last year. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then, I mean... But Drew I'm happy Butler you went to the West. You needed to see that challenge because that would have right. been always the big what if in LeBron's right. career. Like, yeah. what would he have done in the West? You know, and unfortunately, he wasn't healthy. The Lakers weren't healthy, so we don't know from this past season. But yeah. it's gonna, that's going to be the challenge the next three. <coughs> Let's see. We'll how see. We're going we're gonna to find out. <laughs> this season is almost over. It might be over tonight. But uh, really quick, one more time, let them know what you got coming up, where they can find you, your next game's uh, at. Gersh Park. West 4th this weekend, um, Dykeman, my Instagram is TrillVirgo21 if you want to get at me there and whatnot. So I'll be around. I'll be around the city for sure, for sure. Either playing or supporting my bros is out there playing on the circuit as well. So, you know. Right. And we're going to be out there too. We're going to be in uh, Hoops in the Sun uh, this Shout weekend. And we got uh, we got the Rucker coming up too. We got to rock out with the basketball beauties. Shout out to Mike Lowry. We're going to link up with him. But uh, Legend of Two Games, man, I think, I think that's pretty much a wrap. Thursday night, game six, man. Game let's six. Go. Let's close it out, Toronto. Come on, we up out of Appreciate here, man. Appreciate you having me too again, by the way, man. You already. Thank sure, you, man. Like. MVP, we got to have the MVP <laughs> with us, man. <laughs> On my self trip, young legend in two games. Yeah. We up out of here, man. Peace. Higher expectations. Young and intern time, for the white and black fans. Asia to Manhattan. I get all my facts from my bro, Mark the Stats, man. If you're not tuned in, I recommend the CAT scan. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And if your brain checks out, then you deserve a backhand. <laughs> Sports, gossip, all the hot topics. Hey, hey. Real fans, real talk.com got it. Uh -huh. They got the hottest bloggers. Is Jeremy Lynn hurt? We'll log on to the site and you can hear it from them first. Uh -huh. I'm talking about the latest. Yeah, I'm talking yeah. about the greatest. Yeah, yeah. Go check out the archives. Even tell a neighbor. Tell him Bobby. From spring to winter, tuning in should be the only thing on your agenda. Certified cosign, you know what I'm about, son. Real fans, real talk.com. I'm out one. Real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk.com. Real fans, real talk.com. Real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk.com. Real fans.